Now on the surface, Samsung's fresh new Galaxy S22 flagship smartphone may seem like a bit of a half-hearted upgrade over last year's S21. I'm sure it looks a wee bit more premium, but many of the features will give you a serious sense of deja vu. Even though the camera hardware has been overhauled and Samsung has tweaked quite a few bits here and there. So the question is, is the Galaxy S22 worthy of a place in your pocket, purse, pants, wherever you decide to stash it? Well, I've had my SIM in there for a full week now using it as my full-time smartphone. So here's my in-depth Samsung Galaxy S22 review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now, one of the few aspects of last year's S21 that I'm really glad carried over to this year's model is that dinky design. At a Nats pube over 6 inches, the Galaxy S22 is comfortable to stash in your jeans all day long, and easy enough to use one-handed, especially as there's actually a one-handed mode. And I found I had absolutely no problems when it came to usability, even when I was lounging back in bed. Because that screen doesn't curve around the edges of the smartphone, that means that your palm flesh doesn't cause merry havoc whenever you're clutching the phone really tight. And while, yeah, the S22 does lack any kind of real flair, I do kind of like that simple design, and I am a fan of how that dinky camera chassis now blends in with the rest of the back. The front and back ends of the S22 are protected by Gorilla Glass Victus, with Samsung's armor aluminium frame sandwiched in between. And I do get a little bit worried wherever Gorilla Glass Victus is concerned because while it is more shatter resistant than previous versions of Gorilla Glass, I found that it also scratches up rather easily just with everyday wear and tear. And panic levels were at maximum with the S22 as well as there's no pre-installed screen protector on there, but thankfully touch wood so far, no scuffs or little nicks anywhere to speak of. And the only way you're going to put a dent in that edge in there is if you actually drop the Galaxy S22 onto a hard floor from quite a height as well. I should know because I've actually done that. You've also got full IP68 water and dust resistance here as well. So no worries if you want to rock in the shower, the bath, the jacuzzi, whatever you want to do. And right now Samsung is offering the S22 in a small selection of colours. Got to say my favourite models are that shiny white effort and this here moody green version too. I think of the two, I am leaning towards this lovely green effort as that dark finish does hide grubby prints and grime rather effectively and it just looks rather fetching. And can't say I really have much complaints when it comes to the software running on the S22, the latest freshest Android 12 of course with Samsung's One UI 4.1 launcher squatting on top of it. And yeah, I can't say it's been a flawless experience. I've seen a few weird little quirks and bugs here. Occasionally I would tap in a notification and absolutely bugger all would happen. A couple of apps have just said bollocks to it, I can't be bothered anymore and shut down in the middle of me using them. But you know, a few little moments of micro frustration aside, this thing has been well behaved. However, I gotta say, the Galaxy S22's haptics are weak source, probably a consequence of that shrunken stature. I'm not even kidding, there's more power in a cockroach's pelvic thrust than there is in this weedy little motor. Still, One UI serves up pretty much all the features you'd hope for in a flagship phone, including plenty of opportunities for customization, a fair few time-saving tools like Bigsby routines, and the usual security smarts as an extra protection on top of Android. And that ultrasonic fingerprint sensor is a winner as usual. It's not bothered one little bit at all if your thumb is sopping wet. Although I've got to say, the face unlock is a bit all over the place here on the S22. Sometimes this phone acts like my so-called mates when I bump into them out on the street, just pretending it's got no idea who the hell I am. But kudos to Samsung though for offering four, four OS updates over time with the Galaxy S22. So that's got you supported all the way up to Android 16. And you've got even longer on the security updates as well. But anywho, if you'd like to know more about the various One UI features here on the S22, well, definitely check out my video all about One UI 4. It is rather spiffing by Jove. It's a bit of a shame, though, that like most other premium, expensive flagship smartphones here on the Galaxy S22, there's no expandable storage, no microSD memory card support at all. And that's especially annoying if, like me, you've got the basic 128 gig model of the S22, because already after just a week of use, I'm close to filling two thirds of that internal storage, not helped by the fact that the system files are friggin massive. And I haven't even downloaded any movies or shows to watch on that slick 6.1 inch dynamic AMOLED display when I'm out and about. That screen is very similar to the AMOLED panel found on the older S21, except now it's a wee bit brighter easily bright enough to comfortably see stuff while you're wearing shades on a sunshiny day. And it could also drop to a lower refresh rate now to save on juice. Although, as we will discover later in this review, that doesn't really seem to have much impact on the Galaxy S22's staying power. 
No mourning or griping about the picture quality here though, the Full HD Plus resolution of this compact screen means fine detail packed into every frame, and as usual you can expect vibrant visuals that properly punch you right in the chops. Samsung's new Vision Booster feature is on board, and this apparently tweaks the screen colour and contrast to match environmental light so darker images are easier to see. Personally, I can't say I noticed much difference at all over the S21, but even when I was kicking back with some moody Marvel shenanigans in a brightly lit room, I wasn't scratching my head over what was actually happening on screen. Contrast is absolutely beautiful, the viewing angles are perfect as you'd expect from an OLED display as well, so top-notch stuff. And I have heard some people complaining that the Samsung Galaxy S22's display is too small to comfortably enjoy a movie or a show on. All I can say is that my eyes are f***ed and I had absolutely no issues kicking back for a couple of hours watching a film on this thing. Try streaming an entire movie on a bloody iPhone SE and then you can complain about size, alright? Those stereo speakers are crazy loud on top volume, although the sound quality ain't too clean once you do hit those highs. I did enjoy streaming music to my headphones and true wireless buds using Bluetooth 5.2 however with full codec support for zero latency and the best possible audio experience. Now the Galaxy S22 is powered by Samsung's own fresh new 4 nanometer Exynos 2200 chipset or at least it is here in the UK and certain other regions. And over the past week the performance has been absolutely fine. Apps seem to stay open for absolutely ages in the background and even with a couple dozen running at once it's really rare to see any kind of judders or jitters. This said, the top end of the S22 does get a bit toasty at times, for example when downloading files and streaming music simultaneously. And also if you are gaming for a good long while on something like Genshin Impact you can expect this phone to properly warm up your fingers. Thankfully I didn't notice any throttling even with the graphics settings maxed out. And while the S22 isn't as capable as many Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 rivals, it still packs enough grunt to see you through whatever you need. That screen may be quite compact by 2022 standards, but it's still sizeable and sharp enough to give you a clear view of the action when you are gaming online, with effectively zero touch lag, or at least none that I noticed anyway. Of course, Samsung's dedicated gamer tools aren't as finely crafted or as easy to use as those found on many other phones. And also Sammy has promised big things from its Xclipse GPU which is integrated into that Exynos chipset including full ray tracing support for mobile games in the future but how many games actually take advantage of this technology still remains to be seen. No complaints on the connectivity side though, you got full Wi-Fi 6 support and 5G naturally and I had absolutely zero issues whether I was connecting to Wi-Fi networks or 5G mobile networks over the past week. However, the Galaxy S22 suffers from one crippling weakness, as bad as a dodgily designed vent on a Death Star. And somewhat annoyingly, it's the exact same reason that meant I couldn't recommend last year's Galaxy S21 flagship smartphone. You see, packed inside of the S22's compact frame is a very small 3700mAh capacity cell. So once again, it's been non-stop battery wars here on the S22. Every single day for this past week I've been using this as my full-time phone. It's been dead by about 9-10pm in the evening. It's never lasted a full day on a single charge. And it's not even like I've been playing Genshin Impact non-stop on this thing. Even days where I've done absolutely no gaming whatsoever, only done you know a little bit of camera action, a little bit of video streaming, it still generally dies before I'm all tucked up with Teddy. That's around four to five hours of screen on time. And yes, a lot of compact smartphones unfortunately do suffer from the same battery life wars, but you know, if you do want a compact handset that can last you a full day easily then definitely check out something like the Xiaomi 12 which easily makes it through a full day even with plenty of hands-on action. And as usual the charging speeds aren't anything to write home about here on the S22. You've got 25 watt wired charging, 15 watt wireless charging so pretty paltry compared with a lot of big Chinese rivals certainly which tend to offer more like sort of 66, 80, 100 watt charging these days. Now if that hasn't completely put you off, you're still intrigued by the S22, well let's check out that main camera tech which is now a fresh 50 megapixel sensor. That camera hardware may be different here on the S22 now versus the older S21 but not much has really changed up in terms of the actual photo and video quality. For your photos, yeah the S22 does still occasionally boost those colours to make a scene look more appealing but not as bad as some Samsung blows of the past. This phone is fantastic when it comes to capturing action shots of kids, cats and other mobile subjects. The shutter speed is generally fast enough to tap and snap lots of pics in quick succession. Unless you're snapping away in low light that is, in which case you'd be waiting a good couple of seconds for each image to be captured and processed. 
Still, the Galaxy S22 generally copes well with strong light and contrast. I only really saw any real saturation when I was practically shooting into the sun. And when you move indoors or to darker areas, the S22 still copes well, capturing enough finer details so your photo will look good when you chuck it up onto a TV or monitor. Tin as good in low light as the Pixel 6 series smartphones or the Oppo Find X5 series as well, but it'll do the job. The primary camera sensor is once again joined by a 12 meg ultra wide angle lens, which does as well as expected, proven up to the task of snapping more dramatic results. And while the 10 meg telephoto shooter with a 3x optical zoom isn't a patch on the Ultra's space zoom shenanigans, it's still very handy for getting closer to your subject without disturbing them. But of course this wouldn't be a Samsung smartphone without like a gajillion different bonus camera modes. That portrait mode is as impressive as always, allowing you to adjust the severity of the bokeh after you take the shot, although the edge detection does occasionally get a bit janky. My personal favourite, however, is still that single take mode, which is great when your kids or pets are up to something. This not only captures a short video clip, but it also serves up a variety of filtered pics and comedically bizarre GIF style efforts that are highly shareable. Standard video can be captured at up to 8K resolution, which is a hit and miss affair. I prefer keeping the S22 at Ultra HD level with a choice of 30 or 60 frames per second filming. Picture quality is ruddy great, even with lots of motion in the shot, and once again the visuals aren't too troubled by tricky conditions like high contrast scenes. Audio is clearly captured from all directions, and even when things are a bit breezy, that sound wasn't distorted much at all. Overall top stuff, though the Oppo Find X5 still has it beat in low light. And last up, the S22 serves up another 10 meg selfie cam, which may have a low megapixel count compared with many rivals, but I was happy enough with the results. Processing times are again long in low light, but you don't end up with much grain and there's enough room to fit in plenty of heads when needed. And yeah, you could shoot up to 4K resolution video using that front facing selfie camera as well. The uh, video quality doesn't quite look as good in 4K as it does from that rear camera, but it's certainly passable for just a simple bit of vlog action or whatever. And the audio pickup's pretty good even outdoors. The wind distortion ain't too bad at all. So that right there is my full final frank review of Samsung's fresh Galaxy S22 flagship smartphone and I gotta say it does feel like a serious case of deja vu, not just because it's an incremental upgrade over the S21 but also because that lacklustre battery life makes the S22 about as appealing as Satan's armpit. Okay, so that's probably a little bit harsh on the Galaxy S22. It's a perfectly fine flagship smartphone. I did enjoy using it this past week when it wasn't dying on its arse. I've got to say though, I do prefer the Xiaomi 12. Yeah, Xiaomi doesn't offer the same level of software support as Samsung or the same great range of security features, but it's just as delightfully dinky and the Xiaomi 12 also boasts flawless performance and much better battery life. So anyhow, that's my review. But what about you guys? Have you been using the S22 as your full-time smartphone? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below, especially if you're using that Snapdragon model, which you get over in the US uh, versus this Exynos model. I've heard the Snapdragon model is a bit better when it comes to the battery life. Uh, so that would be great to hear. And please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a bloody lovely rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you. Bye.